Welcome to Emotional Resilience, Living with the Fruit of the Spirit. I'm your host and author, Ron Ovid. Today we're on Lesson 38. Uh, we're in the third part of Clearing Our Conscience, a very important part of emotional resilience. You know, if we have a, a negative conscience, something that's bothering us, you know, it can really affect us emotionally, and it can be hard to bounce back from that. Or if we have what we talked about a couple of lessons ago, false guilt, you know, shame in a sense that keeps pulling us down, well, that too will cause us to uh, be uh, deficient in our emotional resilience. Well, today we want to talk about uh, making amends. Last time we were together, we talked about taking a fearless moral inventory. And you know, you don't hear much about this, unfortunately, in the church today. We, we don't talk about uh, how do we actually make amends. And so I want to take this time today to really talk about it. And hopefully, if it's something that you need, uh, you'll be able to take advantage of it. You know, we did a moral inventory, and, and as a result, we should probably have a pretty good idea of who we've offended and who has offended us. Uh, with those uh, who have offended us, we need to work on coming to a place where we can forgive. And it's not always easy, you know, and it may be that you need help with this. And if so, you know, you can find a counselor, a pastor, someone, a good friend, and, and really try to understand, how do I forgive? How can I let go? And it can be something that will really help you in your life. For those that we've offended, though, we need to consider whether we need to make amends or not. Now, it's easy to go overboard with this. It kind of ties in with that false guilt that we talked about before. You know, the person you talked bad about in sixth grade didn't even know that you did it. You were gossiping. You don't need to go back to them and tell them, hey, you know, I uh, called you a moron a couple times. And, <laughs> you know, you know th th there was no offense made. What you did was gossip at the expense of someone else. And if you feel guilty about that, confess that to God and then repent. Don't do it anymore, right? But we're not trying to major on the minors here. You know, but if... Indeed, when you were younger, you did some gossip, you told some lies about someone, and it ended up hurting them, and they know you did it, and you've never made amends for that, perhaps that is someone that you need to. It depends upon uh, the seriousness of the offense and whether or not you have made an amends in the past over it. Well, you know, there's three different kinds of amends when you think about it. There's amends to God, right? Uh, we've offended God. It isn't just a person that we've offended. We've also offended God with our wrongdoing. You know, David said, have mercy on me in Psalms 51. Oh God, because of my unfailing love, because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin, for I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Now, there's a person that needs forgiveness. And listen to what else he says. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. And so David, not only had offended someone else, he needed to make amends with God. And we call that confession, right, and repentance. And we get our conscience clear with God. Well, sometimes... We need to make amends with ourselves. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, we need to forgive ourselves. We need to let ourselves off the hook. You know, there's things that we've done, things that we've done that have hurt us, things that we've done that we regret. And, and we don't need to live in shame. We don't need to be constantly angry about it or give up, right? Or say, what's the use or what's wrong with me? Instead, we need to know that it was wrong, we repented, we're forgiven, and we can move on. And we can allow it then to learn from it and become part of our maturity. You know, Paul said this, so there is now no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. You know, and Paul wrote that. He had persecuted the church. He regretted deeply that he was out there killing Christians. But instead of beating himself up, even though he recognized how heinous it was, he was able to say, there's now no condemnation. 
And we need to know that and believe that and live that way. You know, John, the Apostle John wrote, 1 John, he says, if we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now again, you know, we repent, God forgives us, and we move on. But then there's amends, and that's what we're talking about today, to those that we've offended. Making amends when we offend someone is a strong biblical concept, principle that Jesus taught in the Sermon on the Mount. He said this, so if you're presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple, and you suddenly remember uh, that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar. Go and be reconciled to that person and come and offer your sacrifice to God. And so, you know, we want to stop and we want to think about those that we have wronged. We want a clear conscience. And I put a prayer in there and it goes something like this, Lord Jesus, I know that I have sinned and wronged many people. I ask you to bring to my mind those that I have offended and need to ask forgiveness from. I ask in the name of Jesus, amen. And you know, I encourage you to take a sheet of paper out and pray over and say, Lord, who have I offended? Who has something against me that I need to clear up? And you wait and you think about it. And you don't have to just go out right then, but you wanna think about it. And, and what was the offense? And what did I do? What was my attitude? And what would I like to say to them? And you take your time and you work on that. But we start with what AA calls step eight. Now, Celebrate Recovery is a Christian version of uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. They have their eight principles, which is very similar to the 12 steps. And so uh, you can find someone in AA that can help you, and you certainly find someone in Celebrate Recovery that can help you. They have over 25,000 chapters in churches all around the country. So if you go to their website, Celebrate Recovery, you'll be able to find one near you. And I'm sure if you called the person that's in charge of that, they would be happy to sit down and go over how to make amends. It's an important principle, but step eight says first, we made a list of all the persons we have harmed and became willing to make amends with them. And so this is a process of who is it? Who is it? Hmm, what did I do? And am I willing? Am I willing at this point to think about making an amends, okay? And so we make a list and we discern, you know, what we want to do. What, what, what kind of amends do we need to make? Now, here's what some of the AA literature says about this. We have a list of all persons we have harmed and to whom we are willing to make amends. We made it when we took our inventory. Who do I have resentments to? Who, who has something against me? We subjected ourselves to a drastic self-appraisal. Now we go out to our fellow, fellows and repair the damage done in the past. We attempt to sweep away the debris which is accumulated out of our effort to live on self-will and run our own show. You know, this came out of uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. And unfortunately, many times uh, when we're hooked in an addiction, uh, sometimes we deceive people in order to stay in our addictions. Or we tell people we're going to stop and, and we just don't have the willpower at that time. And, and, and we leave many people hurt in the wake. And, and so a person that's going through uh, recovery needs to do this where they can clear that conscience. It's a do-over card. But you say, Ron, I don't have any addiction. I haven't done that. I understand. But still... You know, we're not trying to make up people, you know, that we need to make amends to, but there might be someone that you're bitter toward or that's bitter toward you. And the same principles that they talk about apply to us in trying to make amends. Another person wrote, step eight is a social house cleaning. And I like that term. Just as step four was our personal house cleaning. 
In step eight, we're setting out to clean up all the bruised relationships and, and the pockets of guilt, pain, fear, resentment, and sadness that are stored inside, stuck to our shameful past deeds. For this undealt uh, with this material uh, blocks us from loving other people, ourselves and God in the present. And then the, he wrote, it is as God were saying, now I want you to face what you have done and own your part in hurting each person in your life so that you can move into the future I have for you unencumbered by the past and beginning to understand how not to keep repeating the mistakes of the past. Isn't that exciting? Isn't that freeing for us that we can clear this up where we can move on? Another person said, the eighth step is not easy. It demands a new kind of honesty about our relationships with other people. The eighth step starts the procedure of forgiving others and possibly being forgiven by them, forgiving ourselves and learning how to live in the world. By the time we reach this step, we have become ready to understand rather than to be understood. We can live and let live easier when we know the areas in which we owe amends, have been taken care of. It seems hard now, but once we have done it, we will wonder why it took us so long. And then someone wrote this, and I think it's a, it's a good point. The final difficulty in working the eighth step is separating it from the ninth step, which we'll talk about in a minute here. Projecting about actually making amends can be a major obstacle, both in making the list and in becoming willing. We do step eight, making the list, as if there were no ninth step. We do not think about making the amends, but just concentrate on exactly what the eighth step says, which is to make a list and to become willing. The main thing in this step does for us is to help build an awareness that little by little, we are gaining new attitudes about ourselves and how we deal with other people. So let's look at the ninth step then. The ninth step says make direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do, do so would injure them or others. And so now that we have the list, right, and we've become willing, we've prayed over it, then we want to prepare, you know, what we're going to do, you know, what we're going to say ahead of time. Now, don't try to make amends off the cuff here. Too many things can go wrong. Amends should be made after a time of reflection and preparation. You know, what was your part in it? What were your offensive actions? What was the overarching uh, offensive attitude? I remember I was young. I was only 18 when I did my first amends. And I remember I, my conscience was bothering me with my mother. And I knew I needed to go make amends with her. Now, I could have listed all the things I've done wrong, uh, but I'm sure I would have missed some. And instead, I looked at the attitude. And the things I've done was resulting from an attitude of ungratefulness, of selfishness, of unappreciation. And when I went to my mother to make amends, I asked her, I have come to realize how wrong I am in my attitude of, of you know, unappreciation, uh, taking you for granted, in the lack of doing what I should be doing and taking my part. And I, you know, I said an amends. And I expressed the attitude of ungratefulness and selfishness. And, and then I said, would you forgive me? Now, in that moment, my, my mother was able to think. And maybe there were some things sticking out in her head. Maybe she thought of the time when, you know, I said, I, I'm not going to clean up my room. Or, or you know, I'm not going to do that. I'll come home when I want to. You know, she, she may have thought of those kind of things. But because I named the right kind of attitudes, she was able to put that all in that umbrella of that attitude and saw that I was repentive and knew in her heart that if I truly repented of those attitudes, that kind of thing wouldn't happen again. And so I was able to make an amends. Now, had I named just a few things, that would have been okay, 
but she could think of other things. And would it have really changed my attitude? Would she really trust that I've changed? So it's really important to get to that attitude behind it. Take out a sheet of paper, write down what you want to say, you know, uh, and, and you go there with it in your hand if you have to. You don't leave this to chance. Too many things can go wrong. So you want to be prepared to take responsibility for what you said or did and certainly for the attitude that was behind it. And, you know, you start off with, you know, I'm sorry that I hurt you. I'm sorry that I offended you. I'm sorry for my attitude of. Now, if you've hurt the person multiple times, then certainly the attitude is the real important thing here that you want to repent from. And I've come to realize that I was wrong in my attitude of, and I don't want to be that way anymore. That would be a tremendous way to really express your sincerity. And so, you know, forgive me for my attitude of ungratefulness or disrespecting you or taking you for granted. And you need to be prepared now for reactions. They may come back and be ex uh, upset, and they may be bitter, and they may not want to hear it right then. And so you stick to the script. They may say, yeah, well, you know, it's been pretty rough and you can go, I understand. I've come to say how sorry I am for my attitude and you repeat it. You don't go off script. You don't defend yourself. You don't go, what are you talking about? That was your fault. <laughs> You've come to say what you wanted to say. I came by to make amends and I'm sorry for my attitude. And, and if it keeps escalating, then you simply say, and you can write this out too, because you need to have it in front of you. Well, I came by to make amends, but I can see it's not a good time. You know, I, and uh, you know, I'd be happy to come back and perhaps we could do it at another time. And they may totally reject it, and that's okay. At least your attitude was there, it was correct. You tell them why you came, and perhaps you're leaving the door open, we can try this at another time. And you want to avoid you statements, right? It's, it's I feel, I think, I believe, I thought. I'm sorry for the attitudes that I expressed, right? And so, you know, you don't go, I'm sorry that you were offended because you're so stupid. <laughs> I mean, what, what kind of uh, repentance is that? What kind of amends is that? It's not about them at this point. Yes, they may be 90% wrong, but you're owning up to your 10%. You're owning up to what you did. Let them worry about what they did. What is it that you need to make amends about? That's where you stick with the script, okay? And you don't drag it out. It shouldn't take long. It's not time for tea. You're not sitting there to, uh, you know, fellowship together. You can fellowship afterwards. Another day, you're there to make amends. And the goal, you know, is not to renew a friendship, but rather make an amends. Hopefully, the friendship can be renewed, but that comes at a later date. And then you're not there to reoffend. You know, if you're not right in your attitude, then don't go. What you don't want to do is go there with body language that says, you know, I hate you, I can't stand you, I don't know why I'm here, you're such a, a moron, you know. I mean, that stuff shows. You've got to get over your bitterness first. You've got to be able to forgive, but then you're going to make amends for what you did wrong. And you have to understand that they may be mad. And you're making amends may be too early for them, or they may uh, have a real bitterness and, and not appreciate it right then, and you don't need to react in anger. Instead, you try to understand, and you leave, and you try again at a later date if you can. Here again, I encourage you to find someone to celebrate recovery or Alcoholics Anonymous and talk to your pastor. Maybe he has experience with this. Maybe you need to talk to a counselor first, but find someone who knows about this and, and ask them, rehearse with them if you need to. Here's what some of the AA literature says. Although the reparations take innumerable forms, there are always general principles which we find guiding. 
reminding ourselves that we have decided to go to any lengths to find a spiritual experience, we ask that we be given strength and direction to do the right thing, no matter what the personal consequences may be. And another person wrote, I make amends to those that I have harmed. I pay back debts I owe. I apologize. I write letters. I find time to do and say the things uh, that would help heal the damage I have done. I try to bring goodness where previously I brought discord and destruction. It takes insight, courage, and dedication to make such amends. But now I have the help of my God to know what to do and how to do it. I learn to earnestly seek the right way to go about this process from God. I start to live the kind of life that God has meant for me to live all along. And then another person wrote, we will need to have proper attitudes as we approach this step. First, it is good to have forgiven both ourselves and the people we injured, regardless of anything they may have done to retaliate. We will not succeed in resolving the conflict if we're still angry and defensive. Second, we need to have a good idea going into the encounter about what we want to say and accomplish. Most importantly, we want to make sure we state our apology without assigning any blame to the ones we injured. We must act responsibility uh, we, as we take our confession and attempt amends, having thought through all the possible consequences so that we will not be caught off guard and provoked to anger. A rehearsal with a sponsor, therapist, or friend may help prepare us. Another person wrote, we need to be open to any response we get from people we've injured and be ready to accept their response without being angry. We're not there to manipulate them into forgiving us. In order to have this come off smoothly, we should make every effort to purge our bad feelings toward the person or incident before we meet to speak. This will help us resist the temptation to point out to them what, th what we felt they did to provoke us. We are only there to talk about our own behavior. And then another person wrote, it's not a good idea to take the other person by surprise. They have a right to know that you intend to make amends. They have a right to refuse to let you do it at this time. You can leave an open invitation to talk whenever and wherever they might feel comfortable at some time in the future. And so we also then, finally, we need to be willing and prepared to back up our amends with action. The best way to make our amends stick is to be able to offer restitution when possible. If we stole something, we replace it. If you reneged on something, try to follow through on what you said you would do. If you ruined an event and see that you can reschedule or replace it with another. If they accept your apologies and you're not sure what to do, you can ask for their help. You can say, what can I do to make it right? Now, obviously, a person could try to manipulate and take advantage of a question like that. After all, they are offended. However, no one is asking you to be a doormat. Counter offer what you think is reasonable and see if they will agree. Another way to show a repentive heart is to offer what that uh, you are trying to change, that you're trying to change. You tell them, listen, I, I know I was wrong and I'm really making attempts at changing. I'm going to meetings, I'm seeing a counselor, I'm going to church. Whatever it is that you're doing, that might be a way to make up for the offense. And so it's important. Now, there might be some people that in order to bring up what you did might cause them harm. And you know, you need to think about this. Do I need, because I feel guilty, to go and uh, tell someone about an infidelity that I made and ruin their marriage? Perhaps not. Perhaps that's something that you and God have to deal with. And so you need to think about the consequences to the other person if indeed something was told that would do them harm. And so you need to think about that. If you have questions, find a person to celebrate recovery, a counselor, a pastor, or someone in AA that can help you with that. You know, 
I pray that God would help you as you really seek to make amends. This is an important step, one that can free you, one that can set you on a new path, one that will clear your conscience and help you behave differently in the future. And so I encourage you to pray, ask God to help you with making amends where you can move on with a clear conscience. Mm -hmm.